Welcome to the Movie Roundtable, where you will always get an honest and thought-provoking discussion about movies. I'm Marcus Blake, and I'm with That Nerd Show. I'm Daniel Robert Durrett, and I'm with DriveByMovies.com. I'm Allison Costa, and I'm with That Nerd Show. I'm Gwendolyn Murphy, and I'm with DriveByMovies.com. And tonight, we go back into the DC Cinematic Universe, uh, what has got to be one of the most anticipated movies of the year. And hopefully a movie that will help save the DC Cinematic Universe, considering we've had some disappointing movies. And the movie that I'm referring to, in case you couldn't pick up on my clues, is Wonder Woman. Now, before I say anything or Daniel says anything, I feel like we should turn this over to the female nerds on our panel, who have done plenty of talking about this movie before we even got started. Let's jump right in. What did you think about it? We'll start with you, Gwen. Okay, so we're going here, right? I just want to say, any of you little girls out there, you need to check out Wonder Woman. This is a super heroine like we've never had before. You look back at previous Wonder Womans, and granted, it was great writing, it was great costuming and whatnot, this particular super heroine is the bomb. She's smart, she's tough, she's courageous, she's compassionate, and she brings everything to the plate that you would always want, but most importantly, she's really strong. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting because we were talking earlier about how they've, we've redone superheroes so many times, and every generation has a superhero for their generation and for their society. And today's society, you know, the, super, the superheroes we've had in the past don't work for today's society. The kind of superheroes that we need to emulate for children then is not the same. The, the image of women in the 1960s, is not the same as the image of women today. Right. So they did such an excellent job casting her because if you look at her background, her military training, her martial arts training, all of these things make her such an in-depth character. It's not the superficial trying to make her be something. Yeah. She has that already in her. And there's an intensity like we talk about because not only is she a superhero, but in this case, she happens to be a goddess as well. And seeing that, um, she talked about her empathy. You talked about her empathy. And I think that's what I love the most because we don't want to spoil too many things. But in the end... Well, we do give a little... Okay. A spoil. In the <laughs> end, in the end, it's really her empathy and her compassion that ends up igniting that goddess within, right? She's got the power. She's got the kick-ass skills. She's got all the fighting. She can do all of that. And yet something's holding her back. And when she's finally able to clue into what it is, and it's that connection with humanity, it's that connection that she finds with a human being that she's supposed to be so much greater than that ignites that and kicks into the god. And I just, I love that they make this complete picture of her, you know, like all superheroes. The best ones are the ones that they do. You know, there's that great line where she says, it's not whether they deserve it or not. It just comes down to what you believe. Yeah, and right. it's true because, you know, humankind, so, true. so many of us suck. I mean, there's bad people. <laughs> She's trying to figure out why there's having wars and stuff. What are you and saying about human beings? <laughs> I like well, her perception. I like her real perception. Yeah, there's a little bit of bad and ugly in this and world. And she says that. She well, says, and, you know, they're ugly. And the ugly, ugly in her mind is all driven from one specific thought character yeah. in, well, her, in her mind. I mean, if you look at like every sci-fi show like Star Trek, it's always the alien or the outsider that's like commentary on humanity. Well, yeah. for superheroes, it's, you know, the goddesses, the people that don't really quite understand, mm -hmm. but try and learn. I think, you know, okay, here's the thing about all of these movies that we, we have seen so far. We have done the origin story to death. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows yes. Superman's origin story. Yes. Everybody knows Batman's origin story. I think there's people in third world countries that, that know, know about Batman. Right. But we don't really know that much about Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So half, dedicating the first 30 to 45 minutes of this movie to give her a great origin story and talk about her history was fantastic. And yeah. The thing that makes her, in my mind, great is she is naive. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. simple and innocent, and the banter between her and Chris Pine's character, mm -hmm. Steve, you know, who doesn't really know what to say, he's trying to be polite, and especially when they're talking about passion and love on the boat, and a little bit of a spoiler there, but, <laughs> you know, he doesn't know how to fully explain it without coming off as an ass. And yeah, I don't know that, she, I don't know that naive's the right word, because as they start getting into it, she's like, yeah, I know, biology reproduction. Oh, okay. It's not, it's not, the na it's not really that she's naive, she's just unlearned as to what things are, but like, she has the knowledge and she picks up on things quickly, right? She gets what he's saying. She's not embarrassed by it. She's not like shying away from it. She's like, oh yeah, well, I know what that I, is. And I don't and want anybody to misunderstand that I'm 
referring to her as you know being stupid. No, I know I what just, you mean. It's just I it's a different. It, I think being naive about how you know human beings yeah, are. She's unlearned as to what mankind is. Yeah, in this yeah. War, that's it. Yeah, she's no, a no, literal bubble child. Yeah, <laughs> she's <laughs> Zeus's <laughs> bubble child. Yeah. Okay, true. And, and, but she's but she's learned things through their studies, right? Like they have they've had it's not like she just right. grew up fighting. Mm -hmm. She's learned all this different stuff and different techniques. But it's interesting to watch her facial expressions throughout the movie as she's observing human behavior, like how yes. odd and things that we're so used to, mm -hmm. and seeing how ridiculous it is to somebody else. Like why on earth would you wear that? Like the scene where she's trying on all the dresses and she's trying to like squat and kick and <laughs> all this stuff because she's like, how do women do this? I and it's that. and it's true. It's like well, why don't they wear these clothing? It's so useless. Why yeah. do they have this? Like, it's your armor. Yeah. Wearing a pencil skirt. yeah, so it's a it's an interesting right. commentary on that. That part I love is I love that. Well, and this is the first Wonder Woman movie, so this is fantastic for me to read that now. Well, apparently it's, they've been developing it since 1996. Well, so this has been it's in also the first for a very time we long. Well, time. and Adrian Palicki was you know even shot. They've got like four episodes. Oh, for that's a TV right. Yes, show yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. That yeah. never that that is literal. You know, I hate to say it, but ATX television fodder for this moment. You know, of the, the the pilots that were and never got shown that it'll you know get to pick up and 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 show. But uh, I I think you know it's just all just just CBS and the way CBS has dealt with right with all of what they well. Got. But I also think it's important to point out that uh, other than Supergirl on television, it's really the first time that we've yeah. seen. And we've talked uh, about female this before. by herself yeah. as the center of Well, Marcus and I have talked about superheroes before because we used to talk about, like, you know, who is your favorite. And I am not, I feel bad because I, obviously I'm female, but I have not loved how superheroes, the females we've talked about, been portrayed. True, absolutely. Because either, either they're the villain, right? Either they're the villain or they're super slutty and, like, or dumb. Or they have, like, stress. How dare you say that Alicia Silverstone is <laughs> Batgirl was not awesome. But oh, talked, wait. We've talked that about this. From that bad dream. We've talked about this, and, we've, and I and I share Tom how. Beats. Which who was? Who was? <laughs> oh, <laughs> say? No, we did say that. <laughs> hey, it broke the internet for a little bit. You know? and, and, Everybody in the world was like, "What the? Was DC thinking?" <laughs> no, no they're well, not. and what's cool about this particular movie is they did stay true to the comics. But what's interesting also about it is that the character of Wonder Woman throughout the years has in evolved. the comic books yeah. right. changed. Yeah, it was she was one way, one time, one way, another, and she was Which is true of all not comic necessarily comic characters as strong can. as she is. Now. Yeah, that really right. came through this time. But I like it how she's that you know, even I think in the X Men movies, for example, I did love Jean Grey and I did love Storm. They were strong characters, right? Uh -huh. But it, they weren't the driving characters of the thing. True. A little bit. Jean Grey had a little bit of a thing, but here this is like based just on her. When you were saying that. She She's the right. first lead. Is the first time we've had. She doesn't have a superhero guy by her side to nope. make her work well. It's just her. And I, speaking of guys by her side, she did have a superhero. Well, next I was going to say because yeah, Robin Wright was. Oh yeah, yes. she was. Yes. She she did. Did. I was going to comment on that. So I want to comment on her. Yeah, I love the fact that she was in this movie, but you know, House of Cards season five dropped She's this so week, good. so I've been trying to finish that up, and I'm like, I'm getting confused. You're this general, but all I keep keep seeing is Claire Underwood, this conniving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, yeah, I would be uh, real upset when yeah. Claire Underwood doesn't get mad at Frank and pile drive the <laughs> shit out of his ass. Right. But, I mean, Here, Claire, smoke a cigarette with me. Screw uh, you. But unfortunately, Bam, you I know? think I mean, from a marketing standpoint, that's like bad timing to have her in this movie <laughs> and then right when we're seeing her. She did a great yeah, job, though. Yeah. No, no, she, she does. But I'm in a guy, because usually they have, to have a superhero that's a female, they usually have a guy to substantiate her. Yes. And I love that or they did this time. Some yeah. point. And I love, and we talked about this before it came out, Chris Pine was such a brilliant casting. Oh, I loved it. To yeah. be the counterpart to her because yeah. he's he was just, her Gilligan. He's well, yeah. he's yeah. just which is tough. odd. He was the damsel in distress. Well, he's a good looking Gilligan. <laughs> he you gotta admit, you know, good. I mean, like he was at the beginning he her Gilligan. Use, he wasn't useless though. He wasn't worthless. Like he was just hey, he buddy. wasn't the, he wasn't yeah. the goddess, you yeah. know. But he was still, you know, immediately when she went out in that part to save the village, he was like, guys, she's taking the fire. We're right behind her. Yeah. So it's not right. like he was like. This clueless. I don't know what I'm doing. Like he was still right. a strong character. He just 
he let her be her and say, like that one part where she's like, you guys stay here, I'm going in first. And they're all like, what? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, let her go. Because, yeah, yeah well, he I mean, knew. But what are you really, you know, going to do? Yeah, right? you're not. He knew that it had to be her, but yeah. he was such he a kind of really, though, yeah. I've seen some stuff y'all ain't seen. Come on. But even yeah. before he saw anything, you know, he didn't know what to make of her. And he yeah. kept trying to protect her. Yeah, then she he was kept like, looking at him like, what? I mean, you yeah. know, this is the first man she's they ever seen They had a great life. chemistry for the two of them. Well, and I'm going to say this. I could care less about the, uh, the, the whole love scenes. I, I, I think really it's the love the, fadeaway. Love well, fadeaway. I like the, the banter. Love fadeaway. The banter with your characters too. is really what adds to you know a great exactly. chemistry. Yes. Like you know Anne Hathaway as Catwoman and The Dark yes. Knight Rises. Yeah. Her, yeah. her and Bruce, her banter yeah, is fantastic. they were great. Yes. So what worked with this? What really makes that a cinematic uh, great cinema photography? That's what the word I'm looking for is the snow falling as they're dancing yes. in the middle of the street. Yes. And I'm like. Yes. That that, that little touch there yeah. made Love all that. the difference in the world. Yeah. Also, also, and this is kind of a lesson to you know young men out there about being a gentleman. As he goes into the room, he's like turning out. He doesn't know whether he should. He's not forceful. It's yeah. not kind of lets her make that choice on yeah. his own. And then it really turns into this great tender moment. Yeah. And yes, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but yes, I think the women out there are going to be yeah. like, oh. I love that they touched on it, but they didn't make it a main element yes, of the yes. story. No. And they didn't show any big graphic details or anything sure. like that, because no, no. obviously it was good. It's not going to stop us from having our fantasies no, about it's young people. No, it's not. That, it's that not. That side of her. Yeah. And we know right. how powerful love can be. So and we know, was a nice element of And her. that was what made it so crushing for her when she saw what happened to him. You saw that she was, she was about yeah. to be defeated. She was about to be defeated, and she saw that, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, so. Yeah. It was inter interesting also how supercharged she got after that. Yeah, of course. Well, because grief is powerful. I mean, right. grief and love have that super close connection. Absolutely. So it's, I mean, that was what ignited her to realize that there's more than this. But mm -hmm. her rage is what helped her defeat things, and then she had to rein it in and pull on that compassion. Okay, am I the only one that has this small little complaint that this is too much Luke toying with the dark side and the Emperor tempting you and all it's that? All, I, but it's always the... I, I know, I know. Super but is it, that it's just, But the woman gets her time, finally. I, I'm not saying... I'm not, <laughs> not arguing against that. I, I would never agree with, disagree with you on that. Okay? <laughs> but... It's like, I've seen this before, we know sure. what's going to happen. But every yeah. superhero has that, right? Movie, right? Well, and I and almost, too. before the love scene, I would have liked to have seen just something blow up and he hold it off. Because obviously, this is going to get another run. I mean, we're going to see a Wonder Woman, too. Well, obviously. Oh, yeah. We right. will, we will obviously right. see Please. a Wonder so Woman. So I, I, I have a question that I think uh, is kind of very important to the DC Cinematic Universe, because it's been a lot of our chief complaints. And you, especially on that nerd show, we debate it endlessly. We go, yeah. especially with my co-host Brendan, who's you know very cynical <laughs> and all that. We we will tear anything to, apart. But right. Zack Snyder very much has his tone in all the movies where it's dark and you know gritty and this comic, but you know just the way the coloring is and stuff. This was very very different in how yeah. they did it, where that it, there's a lot more light. Yes, it's war. Yes, it's bad. They, they show how awful World War One was, but when I but think you had one on the island, and then when you left and went into the other film, it was very much to me That's that old Black Lagoon. Right, and I, I 1940s, 1950s movies. But in in looking at everything that Zack Snyder has done in this with the movies. Even Man of Steel had all of that throughout throughout the movie, and of course, Batman versus Superman, oh, it's oh, all just dark. Yeah. Okay. The whole so I mean, right. but this wasn't. It had dark. I know what you're saying. So was, my my question is, I liked it better. I, though. Th I think most people are going to come away saying that this is probably the best out of the movies so far. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. It's the best yeah. out of DC for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Right. It, yeah. That they've done so far. But do you think it might have anything to do with again? that different tone that they're setting compared to what they've done in the past. That, you know, that maybe Zack so Snyder dark. shouldn't be doing these movies, that maybe we should let other people do it. Well, right now, it looks like it's, he's not doing the next one, though, right? I, I only post... Yeah, there are... There, there's always these complaints there that you can be too dark. Yes, yeah, okay. and I agree with that. There was that big debate with 
you know, Man of Steel versus the Christopher Reeve Supermans. And when yes, I talk sure. about those movies, I'm talking about Superman 1 and 2, the good yeah, ones. Yes. Not the no, crap that came later. Because kids to watch all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a very the only one that movie. liked the quote-unquote crap that came later. Though. Although, I'm still with John yeah, Wildman. And if you are the Man of Steel, how do you shave? <laughs> <laughs> you grow a beard. How are you going to shave the beard off? Very quickly. <laughs> See, it's not like the be like... Right, crappy Dollar Shave Club. But but like I said, I think that that I think the way they do the tone of this movie is what makes it work. Yeah. That it's not so dark. There's just it, enough of it that gives you. Well, it, and, and that goes with her character too, though, right? Yeah. Well, There's I, just enough darkness for her. Then you have the lightness comes from her yes. and having. And if you didn't have that, whereas for example, let's contrast that with the the last Batman. Okay. The last Batman was really dark the entire time, but Batman. Is a, there's no light side Absolutely. to Batman. No. There's just yes, not. That there's goes no with the character. Exactly. So like the entire movie is dark, which I wasn't my favorite, but yet it was him. If you're doing it around him and his, it was a right. very dark sure. time, and this, it went with the plot. So the you theme. mean the director that showed Batman just sitting in the Batcave watching all them cameras crochet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be so, the right? So, but but with this, like she she comes from a very different background, right? She mm -hmm. still when she enters, she fully believes that she's gonna go out there and she's gonna kill Ares and it's gonna be over and be beautiful. Yeah. She's been taught this her whole life. Right. So the darkness, yeah. Light. So the darkness yeah. comes from when she enters the real world, but she's yes. bringing the light with her. There you go. So you have that's what. And that and I think that's a great. And that's what she it is, is the light. She but is. I mean, exactly. and she was raised in the light. Exactly. Right. But I mean, immediately we're going to go back to that darker tone when we get to Justice League, which yes. again, I mean. It, the, the, the light is a metaphor to itself. Yeah. That's for you storytellers out there about yes. how to <laughs> you describe the light. Well, I love the fact that this was directed by a female, Patty Jenkins. Right. Yeah. And she actually spent $150 million on this movie. So hopefully she'll make some of that back. Yes. But I think that that landed a little bit more to that strong female character. She really embodied right. that. She wanted to make sure it was depicted properly. Yeah. So kudos to her for that. Yeah. Well, let's, I want to oh, talk about okay. those, I want to talk about Chris Pine's little Barry, like his little merry band of men. Let's talk about them for a second. Because <laughs> They, I thought they were an interesting addition. That, you know, they went. They they want. They need to have that. Right. Right? Yeah. They were an interesting addition. He wasn't just a him and her going to go crew. out. Yeah, this little motley crew of. of and I feel like they tried to hit every little genre, right? Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that nobody feels like they got discriminated against. Right, right. right. Everyone's in there. And once hey, everyone don't worry. There. The men who couldn't even, see the private screen are still going to feel like yes. everything is sexist. Yeah. But we have, oh, yeah. Yeah. we have everybody representative in the Mary yeah, Band. They, they definitely oh, do. But even, even more so, even into the Wonder Woman cares about your PTSD. <laughs> Yes. Right. Well, and it, and it was, and it, I think it's not only that she cared, but it was a moment, it was an aha moment for her that at first, right, when he missed that, you don't know what we're talking about, but when he missed that shot, she was super but critical. You will. you will. She was super critical, right? Like, oh, this is what he's supposed to do and he's not even good at it. And then yeah. she learned something from, you know, the other guy, the actor, she learned from him that everybody has their own mission they're fighting, right? Everybody right. has their own things they're doing. Yes. And until then, and for her, it was an aha moment of like, oh, there's more to him than this. Yeah, Beforehand, right. she, he's the marksman, he's the whatever. Yeah. But in here, it was a like little, and so this is part of her learning process of understanding mankind and coming to learn, you know, like, oh, this is what you're, and he's telling her about him, like, this isn't who I am. I don't want to do this, but I'm an actor well, for this. Well, er, everything, so, everything at night after they, you know, defeated the Germans in the village, yeah. everything at night was probably the best, the more emotional scenes of that movie. Oh, yeah. And it really, that that's your bridge right there of her truly understanding. So you get to talk with all the Mary Bands, you get to understand his background. Well, and what's good He's is funny she, on the piano. Well, what's okay. good about it is that not only did she notice it, but then, like, right when you notice, she put that notice into action, right? Right. Because sometimes we pick up on things, but then we don't follow through with our actions. Mm -hmm. And right. so she, she picked up on, like, that's what it was, and then later on, she recognized a moment to say, oh, no, we do need you for this. Yes, scooped him up. When before, she'd been critical, what do we need him for? And now right. it was, like, a big turn. So I feel like it just shows, how, like, once again, how much depth her character had, mm -hmm. that she's not this superficial so like I'm a big Amazon fight kick punch, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, yeah, but I thought they were a funny little, and they had that little cute moment at the end where they've had all this big fight and he's trying to convince her that they're bad and then she sees them go over and they know they think they're gonna die and they're like huddled together and once again it's like, yes, they are horrible but there's so much more than that. They're more than being, what was the funny line they said? When we always get what we want, what we need, but never what we deserve. Do you yeah. guys remember that? Part? Oh, yeah, they're little, so, they're little yeah. And it's true. Yeah. It's, it was like a funny, just showing the whole side. So, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good, and they did a good job of well, casting. Well, Chris Pine was excellent. He was. Blue. 
He was. Between all of those guys. Exactly. He was Fantastic. the guy that knew right yes. off the bat yes. when he, oh, we got to go to the war. Yes. Well, we're going to get to the war, but this is how you yes. got to get to the war. You yes. can't just Diana, go to the war. Diana, Diana. You got to hold on. Fun. He's like, that's that's like yeah. that's 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 like paperwork and bike. You're from another country and we. The story is fine the way it is. This is just a minor complaint about I think would have been better is if she's actually telling that story in person to Bruce Wayne instead of reminiscing and all that and just uh-huh. shoots out an email. Right. Because obviously... But she might tell it to him someday because he said, I hope you tell me, I will look forward to hearing your story one day. So right. maybe she's and thinking about how she would tell it to him. But can I can we just take that segue to talk about how much I hate after seeing her with Chris Pine, the thought of seeing her with Ben Affleck makes me want to bark. <laughs> can I just talk about okay, that? All right. I, 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 I'm going to let you two have there's your like moment about any, who she should be with. There's I'm not any either. chemistry no. with them at all Absolutely for me. Great. Like not anything at all. Yeah. I mean, her and Chris, Chris Pine. Chris Pine's not Aragorn in this one, though. I, <laughs> I, I know. I know he's not. I know that. But neither is Batman. On that. On that note, there's oh, Batman. Right. And there just wasn't, I mean, like, they're both attractive people, but, like, in the, so far, I don't know what kind of changes, there was no chemistry. So I'm hoping that they're not, maybe they're going to fight together and that will be it, because... I don't want to run anything for yeah. you, but spoiler alert here. Yeah, tell me. Batman, in his elder years, is Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> oh, <geez>. So horrible. <laughs> And now we will never look at the Simpsons quite the right. same way. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't see any chemistry with them. So I don't know what they'll do with that if she'll yeah. have another love interest, which could also be another reason why she's her attitude's changed. Here she's had so... We don't know that she's had any other love interest since Chris Pine. Since like, I don't ever. disagree that... So all those years the, watching more atrocities right. with no love, I mean... Look, well, I don't... She had a little fling with Superman back in the day at some point. With in Superman. the comics, right, right I know. There's been wow. very little consistency She's better not now because Amy Adams... I, I don't good. disagree that, uh, that, you know, her being with uh, Bruce Wayne is Bad not idea. good. No, 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 yeah. I, I don't... Yeah. I get that. But Bruce Wayne can't find, can't love anybody. He's no, never he going to be truly happy. No. Okay. And I'm hearing Clark's lines. <laughs> just, like, like, no one, they, like Lois Lane could not handle Superman's load, dude. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he hey, could only hey. be like with a woman like Wonder Woman. Like it's impossible. Lois could never have Superman's baby. Do you think her fallopian tubes could handle his sperm? I guarantee he blows a load like a shotgun right through her back. What about her wound? Do you think it's strong enough to carry his child? Sure, why not? He's an alien, for Christ's sake. His Kryptonian biological makeup is enhanced by Earth's yellow sun. If Lois gets a tan, the kid could kick right through her stomach. I like to think Kevin Smith is a friend of this show, even though he doesn't know about it yet. The uterus would hold up. Uh, We'll just build another clay, baby. All right. How would you rate this movie? And I'm going to start with you. Oh, you would start with me. Um, well, of course. I'm quite partial. You know, this is a dream role for any actress, and I'm going to give it a 10. <laughs> You're giving it a perfect 10. I You're, am. Wow. I love it that much. I can't wait to own it. So so none of my arguments about how I'm being critical. Okay. No, yeah. Obviously, I did not sway you. No, it doesn't that's matter. Okay. No, because I look at this as something to inspire other women, other girls, okay. girls. to look up to. That strength is irreplaceable. So yeah. I give it a 10. 10. Ten. Alice. Hi, Marks. Oh, I'm torn. Now I feel guilty if I just <laughs> give it a 9 because she gave it a 10. Um, I'll pro- I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I don't give out 10s very often. So I'm probably going to go with a 9. It was phenomenal. I loved it. I don't know that there's a perfect movie that exists out there for me, so it makes it hard for 10. But yeah, a 9 for sure. There was, Definitely. I mean, he made some points if you want to be super nitpicky, but they didn't bother me <laughs> at all. You but can make the, it a 9.9. And we didn't talk about the action, be but, critical but the, I thought the action was amazing. It was awesome. I love the slow motion shots. The one yes. scene where he, he, does the, he does the shield and they reenact that was awesome. I mean... Yeah. It was very, I mean, obviously some of it's CG, we know it's CGI and whatnot, but they did a good enough job cutting through it that it looked realistic enough. There was enough, there was enough fight in her that it wasn't like, oh, she really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, true so, martial arts. Yeah, 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 so I will give it a nine. Yeah, and we'll see, I'm sure I'll see it again. Dan? Oh, no. Hey, bye. He has everything it's a in really eight. strong <laughs> seven or eight. 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 But it's a DC movie. So it's like So a, we're grading on a bell curve. I, that, is, that is very true. So it's and like so a, it's like it gets a plus two 
plus two and a half. The half would most definitely be on the plus side for just Robin Wright. Okay. So nine and a half. Okay, and if you can figure out that math equation, you are Will from Goodwill Hunting. It's an eight as a movie. Right, listen, hear me out. I know you're going to debate me. No, I won't. It's, it, it's an eight as a movie because the things that I'm nitpicking about do bother me. <laughs> But it's a nine. This is the opposite of that. I know exactly. This is the opposite. I know. The total opposite of this movie. Yeah, this movie. Awesome. But it's a nine for this very reason. Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. And for everybody yeah, yeah, that didn't smoked. think she was going to do a good uh, job yeah, or yeah. she was too skinny or what? just, let me tell you something. She brung it. Yes, she, yeah, she did. And there is nobody the else that's going to be able to intensity in her eyes, do. man. Those yeah. scenes. Oh, no. There's I'm no, going to see this at least twice in the theater and the second time will just be for legs. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody else that's going to be yeah, able to do really Wonder Woman strength. and have us take them seriously. Yeah. So. Not for a very So I will give it a nine, but it's Gal Gadot that pushes me over the edge and gives it a nine yeah. because she is such a perfect cast. Yeah, she is. Robin, Robin Wright, Wright, yeah, she's. Talk about, talk about talk about so aging with strength. Oh my gosh, yes. Grace. Oh my gosh, oh my oh. gosh. she's just amazing. They have uh, well, all of them are. Yeah. I love having her in that role. Yeah. And with yeah. that said, we'll be back in a moment. After 10 o'clock, you know what that means? It's late night at Old Chicago. PBRs. Two bucks. Craft beers. Three bucks. Margaritas. Four, four bucks. bucks. Top shelf, you call it five bucks. And it gets even better. All right size appetizers, just two bucks. Wings, pepperoni rolls, and more. Just two dollars. What more do you need? Old Chicago, the right way to late night. Welcome back. The second movie on our list today is one that came out during Memorial Day weekend. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell. Wait, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, right? Is that what yep. it's called? I'm kind of, I'll admit, I'm starting to lose track of what they're called now after five Pirates of the Car Caribbean movies. 15. Yeah. <laughs> Just, but anyway, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Invasion of Boca Raton. <laughs> Is that the next title? Shuffleboard we, shall we, not be we, our lord. Are we now starting rumors on the internet? Yes. Because we can. The one thing that I'm going to start off by saying about Pirates of the Caribbean 5 is, it is definitely better than Pirates of the Caribbean 4, which I didn't think that one ever needed to be made, except it's, it's an excuse to give Johnny Depp a movie where it would make money. But here we are with a fifth movie, and it was actually a lot better than I thought. I didn't absolutely hate it. I'm not saying it's a great movie. I'm not saying that I would have paid a full price movie ticket to go see it. But it was definitely a lot better than I thought it was. And Dan's looking at me like I'm kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, no, I saw it in a place that I paid more than a regular ticket to see it. <laughs> but I love look cinema. You're, you, other than your beer tab doesn't count. Other than <laughs> other right. than well, I mean there was that, but you know. Um, other than my only real complaint had nothing to do with the movie. Um, it was that they need to armor all the sides of those seats because they're all farty when you move them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the biggest question in, in dealing with this fifth Pirates of the Caribbean movie is, did they really need to make it? Or, as a friend of mine pointed out, Pirates of the Caribbean movies are like Windows operating system. It's every other operating <laughs> yeah. system that turns out to be good. Yeah. Yeah, the shitty part is, is halfway through the movie, you've got to update. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, but getting into this yeah. movie, um, it, it's the one that kind of brings it full circle because we, you know, spoilers, but we actually get to have Henry Turner, you know, uh, Will and Elizabeth's son who is on a mission to go find Jack Sparrow. Because apparently that's how you solve all things in Pirates of the Caribbean. You get Jack Sparrow. Um, He's will... been drunker longer than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Why is the rum go? I think it's funny to see Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow. I mean, it's, it's always entertaining. But eventually, you kind of have to stop because it does get old, right? To see the face like it's been to the fountain of youth. Depends on the light. Say about the movie with the only remaining beetle in a cameo. Okay. 
I like. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Quinn. No, I was going to say maybe they do a next one and he's sober. That's how they mm. change that up. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very fun movie. It doesn't, does it? No. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean? I know. Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, I'm telling you, Gibbs, there's a 12-step program. <laughs> that was without even a single drop of rum. Look, I like the fact that Paul McCartney was in there. As, I did as too. A little cameo. But I think it's all, but I, but when it comes to Beatles having cameos in movies, I prefer to have George Harrison in Monty Python movies. I could care less about Paul McCartney, you know, being a pirate. Dude, if I'm directing and someone calls up, and says, Sir Paul McCartney would yeah. like to be in your movie. I'm well, like, obviously on you don't what think, day? Uh, <laughs> but then, as we talked about the last show, we all know that the best cameo will always be from David Beckham. Yes. To really bring your <laughs> yes. movie together. Beckham! The burn Poor face, Beckham! The burned face Beckham. <laughs> it was all about the burned face Beckham. <laughs> but getting back to this movie, I like the fact that you kind of inter you've introduced their son, you've introduced another generation, but he also reminded me of like this Anakin Skywalker from the Clone War, or you know, Attack of the Clones, transitioning into Revenge of the Sith, where he's still whiny but trying to be a hero. So yeah, and I want to slap him. It was uh, a little dad throw the ball with me, you know. Uh, there were <laughs> right. If, if you build the the black pearl, he will come. <laughs> I thought the I thought That's the female awesome. uh, that they were accusing of being a witch was the stronger character. She was, was funny, and not one Monty Python reference amongst the Ryan best Ryan. of them. I know. Yeah, I, know. I was really upset about right. the witch you Monty Python. I know. You're How did you be like that? There's yeah. gotta be a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, Some, somebody's gotta say something about wood, right. or burn floating, it. or burn her. <laughs> Any of that. Any of that would have been wonderful. Tot, not a witch. But you are dressed as one. They dressed me up like this. What makes you think she is a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt. <laughs> so let me ask you this, out of all the movies that we've seen in Pirates of the Great, did this. Hold water for you? Was it good enough for you? Hold water. You had to spend yeah. the whole time. I did. I had to make it. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I left the film and thought about it later and said, if this was the first Pirates of the Caribbean oh, movie, would we treat it of the same reverence? And I, I think it it a little bit ranks out with the Aliens movie. It's probably the third best. It really is better than quite possibly the last two. The little ball of bones rolling around and everybody, however fun it was, it wasn't good for 20-something minutes and practically no. half <laughs> of the second act. It just it wasn't. It lingered on way yeah. too long. Um, so that down that film below this one for me. I like the fact that they kind of cameoed Will Turner, and they kind of cameoed. But ben that was a way. Like okay, Beckham. we're gonna make a back look. Reference again. Kara Knightley's cameo <laughs> was the most wasted cameo. Oh. I mean, you literally. I, no, no, I love. She really at the beginning. Know, right? and she's like, beautiful. No, no, I don't get me wrong. But the well, beginning it made me honestly the, think it well, might have been a little that's scene. The best eye candy in a movie. Like I mean, at first, I almost thought it wasn't wonderful. her. Hello. I literally thought at the beginning of it, it wasn't her. It was CG. Yeah. They were like, blow you. Like, you're right. going to do I mean, you, you without you. You could have put, you know, a struggling oh, wow. actress on a hilltop and had him run up there. It was the moonlight shot. It was the way that it was shot. It, it was, was really... just a wasted cameo that had nothing to do with it. That, that's great well, that you well, had Orlando right. Bloom in there, but. How much did she get paid for that cameo? Well, it's Disney. That's so, the Google I mean, moment that we'll figure that, that, out. That, that, all right, so in looking at the overall story, where you're dealing, which I didn't hate the story because it, it kind of, we get that backstory of Jack yeah. Sparrow, how he does become Jack Sparrow. And it's funny. I mean, it's the, you know, you, you obviously get that CGI image of that very young Johnny Depp. I mean, we're talking 21 Jump Street days. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah. You, you, mean, you mean Jack 21 Jump Street Sparrow? <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know how many shows they I, imported, but yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, the finding of the Fountain of the Youth craft in the, in the fourth movie, I, it didn't do anything for me. This one made sense because, again, it brings it full circle, and you're finding something that can break a curse. 
So it's very reminiscent of the first one. Yeah. I thought so too. And you do get that little plot point of the sentimentality of, you know, Barbosa that he, you know, has a kid. That's all I'm gonna say. So I mean it there are some nice moments, but I feel like that you're also trying to capitalize on past success with it and bring it and get that nostalgia factor. There, there are some literal shark jumps. Literal! Dude, you read my mind. Shark oh my jumps. Yeah. Did they jump the shark on this one? Literally. Literally. <laughs> literal. Pier and beam buildings don't move that easy. <laughs> I like Javier uh, Badam as, uh, as kind of a villain. He's always a great villain. And I did love the effect of him being in water the entire time, even when he was on... Land, so. well, no, on deck, <laughs> on water. On right. Because you can't, it, when he got on land, you can't get on land. Question. Do all of these elements together make this a great movie? Yeah, that's what I was saying. This film apart, if all the others did not exist, if we watched this movie, we'd still been hella impressed like we were with the very first film. I don't know if I would go as far as, as that. I think it's a fun film, but, you know, it... It's a little tiresome. It's not as good of a Jack Sparrow as in previous films. Oh, the first no. film. But I, but I also realize what they're doing is they're trying to get to, you know, the younger generation. The girl stole the show. She, she made that movie, especially with her being a witch and smarter than everybody, and the banter between her and Henry Tur and Turner. She was the one that really made that movie. She did a hell of a job. She did. She's a lot better in this movie than she is in the Maze Runner movies. But you always talk about a lot with the just Hollywood, or have they really run out of stories? And I think when you see these movies, it used uh, to yeah. be like, you know, it used to be we had, like, there, there were sequels, right? When we grew up, it was like, there was a movie, if it was really fantastic, we got a sequel. We're excited. Yes. Then a few years later, it was like, oh, if it was really great, then we got a trilogy, right? And then right. Trilogy. Now you're like on a septuplet. It's like, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is the same thing for books. Why is the rum gone? There was a Russian oh, no. writer that no, said no, years no. ago, back in the 17th century or something, yes, I know that there are about. only six stories, yeah. or right. seven stories. Here's the thing, though. I almost feel like that... But there's, the making, there's the money factor is what comes I, back to. Right. Money I, factor yeah. yeah. I feel like the only reason they're yeah. even making this is, they know is, we'll is sell another vehicle for Johnny Depp. Yep. Yep. And, and they want, and go. people, and sadly not everyone makes films for the love of film. They it's make it because they want to make Pirates money. Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean Jack Sparrow's got an ex-wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I feel like if they're, I feel like if they're going to do another one, then it really should just be all of Jack Sparrow's oh. illegitimate children, no, you know, coming together to on a mission. For one very important thing, Mace. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Not sure it is. Or, thing where he or it could be, or it could be the Black Pearl takes on the Fast and the Furious. We could have both and car races together, <laughs> and we, then you get both of them together. You know, it has a on it. I live yeah. on it. Sixty-eight Chevelle can drive <laughs> right on, on the water. So then we have drunk driving comes into it. Wait, I want. I want to understand this you scenario. You can sail drunk, but you can't drive drunk. I so. want to understand this scenario. Yeah. Basically, Vin Diesel squaring off with Johnny oh, Depp. Totally Vin Diesel. Drunk. I live my life a quarter mile at a time, and then Johnny Depp, uh, his. Typical like catchphrase. But what about the rum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I live my life a quarter of a uh, nautical knot at a uh, time. I knew you were his brother. Un 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 <laughs> unless the wind's on <laughs> blowing, and if we're in irons, I can't have that. And before this. He's not even faking it. Right, and before we can quickly <laughs> turn this into Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> What grade would you give Pirates of the Caribbean? You you talk about that if it was a standalone film that it would be all right, just like the first. But what grade would you give? I was in the Navy. The very first one, nine point two five eight. How many of these um, have you had? I know. <laughs> Only like two point five. Um, a uh, the second one was 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 not near as good. The, the third one was. Well, no, but I'm talking about the fifth the one. Let go one. away. The fourth one was oh my lord, and then the fifth one was better than all of those. But it might have been because they're the they're the opposite bell curve. You're 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 like the English <laughs> teachers, like you know this is actually pretty good. I was sure you were gonna fail this semester. <laughs> you know, I mean, like. Like you're gonna you pull out a, a B minus, right? B minus. 
So you'd give it like a seven or eight? Six point seven five eight. Okay, it better be lower than one. Six point seven five eight. Yeah. What did you what would you give it? Look, it it's a generous seven for me. It is okay, it's fun. Okay. But what I wouldn't. Have... Give, what did you give Wonder Woman? Wait, what did you give Wonder Woman? No, I got. I gave okay. that a nine because okay. I got the dough. Okay, he went from eight there's to not, nine. Right, well, right. Sure there's not she, she jumps it up. At least two points. Right. right. Gal Gadot. There's, there's nothing in this movie yeah. that's going to make no. me jump no. up yeah. past the seven. Well, but like I said, it's it's. Well, there's the dollar theater. This is a good movie. That's a rental for you know. This is a good. I changed mine. Seven point two five. Ah, monkey. The monkey was worth it. The monkey was worth it. I'm Fritz Rahr at Rahr & Sons Brewery in Fort Worth, Texas. My uh, family's brewery and malt house uh, back in the day was called the William Rahr Sons Company, and I wanted something along those same traditional lines. That's how we picked uh, Rahr & Sons. It's really neat because the people that are here, they are my extended family because we're around each other almost 24-7, seven, seven days a week. We're a small company and everybody wears a lot of hats around here. My official title on my business card is Beer Peddler. And for people like us at the brewery who really, really love being around the craft beer industry, the craft beer culture, uh, this is what it's all about, is being associated with something like Rar and Sons, and then of course having the hospitality time when people come into the brewery and, and drink the product. When we first opened up the brewery to the public, uh, I thought that was really cool to be able to come and see where the beer is made. It's fun, everybody's laughing, having a good time. Everybody's got a beer in their hand. You know, here we are today and we have tanks along the walls and in the back of my mind, seven years ago, I actually had visions of that, you know, dreaming about it, daydreaming about it, and now it's actually here. So, I think that's really neat. This beer, I mean, I, I kind of jokingly say we make it with love, but we do. I mean, we're making beer by hand and, and you can really taste the difference. It's about putting out a good product. It's about you know, experimenting and try to create something that's unique that people enjoy and love. And we're back. The last movie that we wanted to talk about tonight, you know, it goes into our category that we always do towards the end of these shows of giving a little love to movies that we've seen at the film festivals, movies that you should be on the lookout for, movies that have surprised us, um, and tonight's movie is now an award-winning uh, film from two different film festivals in the same weekend that was shot here locally in Dallas where we're shooting this show. And the movie is called Cronus. It's a great little sci-fi gem that has the perfect allegory that all great sci-fi uh, movies have. Uh, it tells a great story, asks, makes us ask a lot of questions, and gives us a lot of themes uh, to talk about. Um, I had a chance to watch uh, the screener. I almost, um, a little after watching it, I'm disappointed that I didn't get to see it on a big screen at uh, the famous Monsters Convention. But, but yeah, I know. But but in this job, sometimes you have to settle for the screeners on your own time. Sure. But I was pleasantly surprised about how well done this movie was, especially with it being on such a low budget and how great it looked. You know, especially it being shot around Dallas. And again, I'm not harping on the fact that it's on a low budget, but you have to be amazed at the director and what everybody brought to it, yes. considering. It shows real talent. Yeah. I mean, just when you. Anytime I see a movie that I watch and then find out later was shot on for the budget of a, of a, of a nice used car, yeah. I'm like, wow. These guys, these guys are going someplace. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and Derek Presley, the director, yes. who, which just little tidbit here, is actually related distantly to Eric Presley. He's like a second cousin to Eric Presley. Well, and this uh, is something. Elvis that, and this is something that we were talking about way before the show. That 
every every so often you get these little films that are shot on a minimal budget that mm -hmm. take all the awards that are just so well done for what they've done. Uh, you know, Clerks is always going to be that kind of standard for independent filmmaking because it was done on with twenty seven thousand wow. dollars. But the one, but the sci fi film that uh, that that this reminded me of not not in its tone or the way yeah. that it looked. But being on a low budget, but how great it was, was the movie Primer, which came out like also, 12, 13 years also ago. out of Dallas. Sundance exactly. Sundance winner, yes. Exactly. Like one Sundance, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, it, with you know, for the people that are looking for like some kind of big budget or, you know, when you see this film, realize how much heart goes into it and in being able to tell a story and the fact that you don't need CGI yeah. to tell a great story. One of the things that I wanted to point out first, and what I loved about this film is, at the beginning, when he's when the main character is waking up and I'm looking around, I immediately went back to the Matrix. Yeah. And if you right. understand yeah. about how they yes. made the Matrix, they basically just found spare parts to make this very gritty post-apocalyptic world. It's basically like throwaway stuff to give you that yeah. sense. But it was all cheap to help the production. Yeah. Very, very similar, but it looks good and it adds to the story. So, I, I almost expected to see little code, green code, coming down the screens. <laughs> oh, but, no doubt. It was close yeah, enough. Right. Very close. But, you know, it had a bigger sense of humor to me right. than a traditional film in that realm. Yes. Uh, especially Tom being that it was right. so... Yes. I mean, it won Best Sci-Fi Feature at Famous Monsters Convention. Mm -hmm. And... When you think of a monster convention, you think of, you know, what they show. You know, the right. Shin Godzilla and uh, a lot of the other horror-esque films of that genre. This is a film that was eerie, was sci-fi, but had a great sense of humor to it. And me. a great premise, too. Yeah. yeah. Being able to, to retract memories. Yeah and keep the ones that you really prefer, and the senses as well. It wasn't just memories. Yeah, feeling it all. it was also the senses. Feeling it all. Well, it seems like, um, well, I mean, there was one other movie that talked about, you know, extracting uh, memories, because we saw Rememory at uh, yes. the Dallas Film Festival yes, yes, this yes. past year. Mm -hmm. And I was having this, I was having, when I was interviewing the director and producer of that, uh -huh. I brought up another great example of something similar called the final cut mm -hmm. and again I immediately got brought back to that when I saw this wow. yeah. but it started making me think that if we're having these kinds of stories talking about extracting memories and trying to relive and uh -huh. plant them and all that that mo that what I like to call the Frankenstein motif of stories that the power to create mm -hmm. and then be able to play God and asking the question that you know the really big you know moral question they ask in Jurassic Park you know, you, you spent so much time talking about how you could do it, you never bothered to ask if you should do it. Right. Yeah. And immediately all of that comes back to Cronus as fitting within that motif of, yes, this is a grand experiment, you're doing great things, but are, should you do it? Should well, you and that was playing? very yeah. much where the the, the the character that was played by, by Ted Ferguson, yeah. wonderfully and aptly played by Ted yeah. Ferguson, um, Consistently, I think was that was that shine on to the Cronus character to say, yeah, you know, yeah, well, leave that shit alone. <laughs> yeah, go away from it. You're oh, digging yeah. into areas. Yeah. To me, the one thing that really a uh, rememory in the Dallas International Film Fest, or even back to for me South by Southwest with uh, with Memento, right? Minus that, the tattooing, yes. you know. Um, that the concept of there's some there's an itch you cannot scratch that just because you have the technology or the ability right. to do so should you scratch that itch right and what happens if you do well the fascinating aspect of this particular film Cronus was the fact that they were extracting this from people that had recently passed yeah uh, yeah I really like that part of it yeah. You know, he's like, oh, how long have they been dead? They can't be dead too long. <laughs> well, so, many, well, again. so many good <laughs> Dallas characters, you know, having Grant James oh, in that role. And, you I know, I mean, that. the and doctor I, from Tombstone, for goodness mm -hmm. sakes. And I, and that's another thing, again, bringing up Frankenstein, like when they're starting <laughs> yeah. to basically rob yeah. graves. I'm like, <laughs> right. yeah. thank you for taking that story and putting it into a, a, into a science fiction type story. But right. again, 
the one question that I think pops up in my mind that, that, that I keep asking you know, with this, and I don't, this is my moral question for the movie, I should say. You're trying to get these memories, you're trying to relive and all that, but do you, should you relive? Because there is that philosophy of if it's the, once you go around, that's it. But that's not really technically reliving if it's someone else's yes. memory. It's, well, re, it's living for the first and, time. And there's, and there's been so many things I've done. I don't know if you guys remember, remember Dollhouse. Do you guys remember the show, The Dollhouse? Yeah, yeah. great movie. Okay, so, mean, so Dollhouse, I don't know if you see this series. So Dollhouse has a similar kind of thing like this, right? They basically, they put different people into your consciousness. Oh, right. Yeah. So they, it's one person, but they basically have all of these different lives. But uh -huh. it's once again, it's a, it's a very dark look at it as far as like where do you stand morally like should you do that with somebody else's life right. yeah. that yeah. you're taking the essence of what makes them them it's basically their well, soul well we have crimes like, about the, violating so, someone's body this is like the, the essence are, of who there, they are right yeah. is there not a is it not a crime to violate someone yeah. else's memory and to go yeah, under, intellectual under, life yeah. Yeah. Well, so to sure. speak not intellectual property well, but some right. things are so life. personal for your memory absolutely that like it's just for you like I, there's some memories you have you know whether like for me like giving birth to my kids I don't even know I was having that's my memory that's sure. my right. thing or when you fall in love for the same time yeah. or lose a or even when you lose someone that you love being there like that's something that someone takes from you that's a huge violation so it's yeah. like you know, all of those different questions you have to think about. Well, there's a there's a great quote by Ray Bradbury, uh, who wrote Fahrenheit 451, one of the great, you know, science fiction yeah. novels, that, you know, science fiction has always been and will always be a fabled story of morality. Okay? You will never be able to truly very, get away very, with very that. True, yes. And I think Cronus very much fits the bill with that. Yeah. You know, it, it's again it's great to have this experiment, the technology, but should you really be doing it? And, and what social commentary does that have on the technology that we have now? And that's another thing. That's keeping yeah. going more and more. At what point will it be too much that we cross that moral line? Like right now, we're so, so excited about all the new things. You can, and there's obviously, we love technology. I mean, look, we love it. Go there have been a lot Facebook. of films yeah. that have yeah. dealt with this Except for marketing. newly passed. Yeah, marketing memories right you know you even had the one with uh ryan reynolds and uh um uh criminal, criminal. Yeah, criminal with another gal gadot movie kevin uh, <laughs> i love gal gadot <laughs> <She's Kev> <laughs> and talented I mean, no the, the, the movie was called criminal yeah but kevin kevin kevin, kevin costner kevin. costner oh that's right, that's right. That's <laughs> like my brain right. was going kevin reynolds and i knew that was wrong <laughs> uh but uh, kevin costner yeah where he consistently and he's dealing with that where he has memories that are going against his own brain's knowledge right so to speak there's a, there's a lot of shows that have done i mean shows and movies that have done something similar there's a i don't know if you've been there's, there's a freeform of, tv channel agents of shield yeah, 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 yeah there you and go and agents of shield this whole season that was this whole season and they basically create an entire alternate it's not an alternate reality because it's science but he, they like it's like a they create a code for a whole different world and you're plugged into it, and that's your entire life. They like right. steal their. So there's a lot of yeah. this like messing with like what reality is, mm -hmm. what memories is, taking people's existence. There's a lot of stuff of like, well, can technology actually well, do but, that? Here's the great thing about Cronus, and it's this, and it's and I attribute it to like when Star Trek was first starting out, and including yeah. Next Generation, where you didn't have a lot of money, so you have to tell this great story, this yeah. great allegory, this great moral story. It's all about leaning on each other on a very cheap budget and that's what it does and it hits that point where it makes us ask those questions as like you said especially so with that, technology yeah so you know it's almost basically like putting on a you know a theater production where you don't really have a whole lot you have to rely on the acting and and everything yeah. else the true essence well, the of the story, performance the story's fascinating right. like in particular the part where He's delving into memories of past, or, or corpses, essentially. But one of the corpses that he goes into, he suddenly sees himself. Yeah. 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 Wow. What a twist. Yeah. That was something else. Well, and I think the other thing that this movie will bring about, and, and I hope that people realize it, especially when they get to the end, and I'm not going to give anything away because I want people to enjoy this. Oh, tonight. I do as well. Every great science fiction story makes your character come full circle. Yeah. And... By the time you, if you watch the show and you listen to what I just said, 
and see this movie, you will fully understand by the time you get to the end. Yeah. You yeah, know, most definitely. Uh, which again is its own, you know, metaphor that about you know repeating history and stuff like that, and that, that, that everything is circle. Yeah. You know. So well, I and I love how it, 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 you know, it had it had the, the the delving into the characters' memories. Those memories, in many cases, weren't all fresh. True. Sometimes right. those memories and those experiences and were changes. even well, yeah. well old. Yeah. Like, you know, where he right. with the the Grant character. You know, dealt with the, a past love, that, that beautiful redhead. The person that he delved into his memories was an alcoholic. So right, and he, he even knew that. He could craving alcohol. And he, he, he you could, well, yeah, every time he, the, the yeah. Joey Folsom character would, like, lick his tongue, so to speak, and like, he craving booze. Yeah. He went so yeah. far, so, yeah, that was amazing. Well, as we've said, this is one of those hidden gems that's hitting the film festival circuit, oh, yeah. and I have no doubt we'll get some kind of distribution in the future, and hopefully we can help that along by promoting this so film. So what do you guys rate it? What would you guys rate it? Let's see. I'd give it probably a nine, and I would also yeah. say Derek Presley wrote and directed it. He has someone to keep an eye on because he's definitely an up-and-comer. Yeah. Right. It's a nine for me. For just film, nine. yeah, it's it's nine. definitely That's a nine good. for me just because of the story and because of the very end and the in the great twist that it has. Because I love sci-fi and at the heart of sci-fi, beyond all the technology, is that great allegorical story. So, I would have said seven and a half somewhere in there, <laughs> but like it's eight. once again we're grading on a curve. It was an independent <laughs> film done on a really low Man. budget with amazingly good independent actors and so you you got to give it two more it's like nine five yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean it's a it's great movie point. and i do want to point out one thing you actually told me this before the show if you had had a bigger budget for this movie it would not have been as good and i yeah. absolutely agree with you i i that. think i think so i think that that what they did in the experience of, right. of shooting at such a low budget made it this it's the it special film right. that, they, it that it was. It's its own yes. character. It adds more magic to the yeah. movie. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you everybody for watching tonight's Movie Roundtable. Until the next time, good night and have fun at the movies. <laughs>